All right, back for another whatever it is. The adventures of uh, fill in the blank and make it interesting. Um, okay, I'm almost done with the fakey video, so we'll save that for the end. Um, and I completed the Antikantavad project, and so we have notes, and we'll just go through them and try to get to something. If I can remember what the note is relevant to. <laughs> Which is always a problem. It's, you know, there's a lot of stuff written down. Um, so again, it's Antikantavad. It's mostly, uh, all I know for sure is I am. I'm not too confident that you are. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, it, it talks about real hallucinations. And so that's sort of what the past is. Or even a current perspective is. Is that if I can experience it, then it's real. So if I can experience thinking about you as cartoon characters or something just banging into each other and doing funny things. If I can look at you as like ants or something, <laughs> you know, then I can trivialize it and make it into nothing and that's just so much more comfortable. Um, and it's a real experience. If I can experience it that way, then it is that way kind of thing, which doesn't make much sense to me. Um, uh, not being you and uh, becoming, let's see, you have uh, the option of <laughs> of not being you, me, me, meaning me, and becoming him. So I have the op. That, look, there's no problems here because all you have to do is become like me, and then you'll like what I like, and then you will quit complaining about what I'm imposing on you. <laughs> you know. So what are you complaining about? Isn't that a good enough deal? You just become me, and then there's no problem. Uh, you know. Uh, I can't even go into how, <laughs> you know, that's just not a very fair way to think about it. Um, no, but whatever. Um, useful, uh, something or other. I don't know what it is. It doesn't matter. Um, all right, so he says, uh, I don't think I'm, uh, let's see, I don't think I am what science says he is. Okay, so he doesn't think the scientific description, whatever that might be, um, you know, arrangements of matter, uh, evolution, blah, 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 blah. This is just a, an illusion in our heads, you know, the formation of this consciousness thing, uh, um, you know, like Einstein says about light, uh, time, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, one hell of an illusion. Uh, anyway, yeah, it is one hell of an illusion, being conscious, but that's all it is. It's just a thing happening in the brain. Uh, anyway, science isn't... Um, oh, yeah, my argument, my counter-argument is, is you don't even... Science hasn't even come close to touching reality. The, what's presented by science is a, you know, a, a Barney the Dinosaur description of reality. Um, the scientists are, you know, they write books like The Greatest Show on Earth. You know, stuff parasitically infecting each other and killing each other in horrible ways. It's e eaten alive. The Greatest Show on Earth. They do that kind of crap. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, that's scientific, all right. Huh? Um, you know, they they say things like when somebody, you know, they'll, they'll concede that um, the... the Creationists are arguing for intelligent design, and they'll say, no, that's not true, there is no intelligent design. But they will never admit that what we, what we really have is unintelligent design. They'll pretend that, well, even though it's not intelligently designed, somehow the design is intelligent. And no. So, science doesn't, they're a bunch of pussies, um, and they haven't done the truth a hell of a lot of good in the sense that yes they do the good of half the stories right but they still got a ton of talking bears and you know um, piglet and tigger lots of bullshit is still in there um, so yeah if you want to really so so he keeps talking about the abyss and the coming out of whoever Zafi's cave or whoever uh, <laughs> No, no, you want to really, you want, you really want to go blind, <laughs> you know, really think about what evolution is. A void is easy to take, but really seeing evolution for what it is, um, 
you know, the sharpening of the blade, and then the blade is inserted, and it's twisted, and then it's pulled up, and then the guts fly out. That's evolution is just a constant sharpening of the blade, and the insertion of the blade, and the movement of the blade. Sharpen the blade, insert the blade, twist the blades. It's all. It's a. It's a. It's a meat grinder. It's. It's just cutting us into pieces, constantly cutting shit into pieces. And if you can face that with a smile on your face, dun, 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 you win the prize. You're a lunatic. Yeah, it's really cool. Lunatic. It's a big fancy word. It will make you a little badge and everything. Crazy motherfucker will be the subtitle. Anyway. All right. Um. I like uh, horrible. And is and that. Let's see. I like horrible. Oh, he likes horrible things. He keeps doing. You know, I like horrible foods sometimes, and but then I'll talk about wonderful cheese or something else. So apparently, he doesn't always. He likes a little bit of horrible and some very unhorrible. I don't know. But it's all this my personal taste, and somehow I'm supposed to adapt my taste to their taste because they're saying, "Well, look, I like playing this game endlessly." And uh, so I'm going to make more people, and I'm really not going to pay much attention to the fact that I'm one in a million, or one in ten thousand, or one in a thousand, or even one in a hundred, or one in fifty. I'm just going to pretend that I don't really care if it comes out wrong 45 out of a hundred times. I guess I could reduce that fraction. Um, one in ten, let's just say for the sake of fun. I don't care if nine have to struggle. Uh, because, you know, the one will like it good enough, he'll taunter himself through and go, don't taunt, 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 taunt. Kind of like Trump, 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 taunt, 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 taunt. It's all the same thing, kind of. You know, just, just, la, 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 just go, 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 go. Do, 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 do. Even though it's shit, 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 shit. Just sharpen the blade, insert, choom. Sharpen the blade, insert, choom. It's all fun. I kind of wanted to get that to that is uh, you know, something I wanted to bring up in the other video was that, you know the, all the life lovers all the life think it's all valid and stuff I was thinking about just having to do what it really takes right we already know that the people who eat meat don't accept what their their planet beautification project means which is they would have to actually incarcerate an animal and brutalize it and then slaughter it and none of them have the guts to do any of that crap <laughs> you know i mean some do yeah some can just rip you know the turkey's head off and they're well i'm fine with that um but i mean there's got to be some way to get to them in the sense that <clears throat> there's there's got to be some element that just seems way too unacceptable that if they had to do it okay if they had to really validate this wonderful design this beautiful system of of just tear the weak to pieces. Um, so what if you know, had to do the nine cubs in, you know, to have the one lion? So you're, it's your job. You're going to save the lion, so you're going to have to do the attrition for them, <laughs> the wonderful evolution. And I'll give you the backstory of each one, you know, little Tigger lion or whatever. All the, they'll all have a little backstory. And he's a little heroic cub. He's, you know, he's saved and protected his, his sisters. And he did all kinds of great little things. And you're going to have to feed him to a snake. Yeah, that's right. You're going to have to pick him up and drop him in the snake tank. And say, okay, well, too bad. It's your numbers up, little buddy. Bye. And then you'll drop another one in the parasites to get eaten by worms. And then you'll drop another one in, you know, you'll slice it with your knife and give it a, a little bit of a wound that it got in battle and you'll throw it in the infectious disease tank and you know crocodile stepped on by a hippopotamus you can do that you're, you're okay with that you're willing to be uh, responsible and take responsibility for the, what you're selling you're willing to drink your snake oil? Now, I think 98, 9 out of 100 people are going to have a hard time drinking their snake oil. They're going to have a hard time drinking what their life really means. And so that's why this is all bullshit.
having this conversation is bullshit because if they really had to do what being in control of this thing would mean if they had to take full responsibility for where the bus is going actually sit in the driver's seat and pretend <laughs> they didn't do it I didn't do it I didn't defend it I didn't justify it it'd be a little bit of a different story I think if the blood was actually on their hands which it is in fact <laughs> they just can't see it because they're stupid anyway <clears throat> um, uh, he doesn't like blah 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 I do I have the right to impose without consent or something like uh, whatever um, so again it's just this he's just obsessed with this I like therefore I do therefore <laughs> tough shit for you um, anyway um, a kind of nihilist so he's conceded that he's a kind of nihilist uh, <laughs> yeah I'd, I'd say the bad kind <laughs> yeah this, I'm sure it's that kind the not good kind uh, let's see, not enough solid evidence of you or them. So that's probably one of the most important things you get out of this thing is that he's so focused on the immediate construct, this thing, making this thing jiggle just right. And it really just doesn't matter what's happening to the rest of the shit. So it's like he's on the, tam tam you know, the uh, trampoline and he's bouncing to find his rhythm and he just really doesn't care what else gets bounced off. As long as I got my rhythm, fuck all the rest of you people. You can't dance. If you're falling off, you can't dance. I can't. And so it's, I've said it before, but it really comes down to first man to start bouncing wins, uh, essentially. Um, anyway, uh, other ways to deal with badness. <laughs> yeah, so, so he... You know, it's this kind of thing, you know it's bad, you'll concede that it's bad, and it's just this, now it's just a method. And what I'm saying is, is that they, the, the, his, his way of dealing with it is essentially to add insult to the injury. So yes, he bounced them off, the trampoline, onto the spikes, and then he insulted them and said, you dance shitty. You know, that's all he's doing. To make it okay, he blamed the victim. Hey, you you didn't adapt. You didn't do what I did, which is say, it's all great fun, and so you lose. And you're dead because you're, you chose to be dead. Like, I chose to be born into a sloppy world. It's my fault if I don't like it. Huh? It's my fault if I don't lower my standards and learn how to eat shit. Oh. <laughs> it's my fault if I don't become a cockroach. So that's back to Nietzsche. Be the bug. Uh, anyway, in the case of drug use, oh yeah, that was kind of funny because you know he started talking about drugs and then he he kind of fell into the idea that oh yeah, well I don't like drugs because they have future consequences not consistent with your present fun. And then he had to deal with the fact that how come he's acknowledging the future for this purpose? And he just kind of. That, oops, I, I'll just move on to another subject. So he didn't really deal with the... Um, obviously, the future only exists conveniently. It, it exists when I need to pay attention to it, but it doesn't exist when I don't... I, personally, I'm not going to benefit from paying attention. Uh, so anyway, just bullshit. So he, can, he says we're helpless, which just is such a silly argument. So it's just this argument from futility. There's nothing we can change, nothing we can do. We can't make anything better, can't clean anything up, can't do blah, 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 blah. Can't minimize the losses. And obviously, yeah, well, you can't if you're completely obnoxious to any kind of reason. Yes, if, you can't, if logic doesn't work on you, you can't. Because you, the obvious problem here is creating something that doesn't need to exist and then you know, it's breakable and it gets broken. I mean, you can change whether or not it gets broken by not making it breakable. So don't make it and then it won't get broken. Simple. Yeah, that's easy. Oh, anyway. All right, so on to the fake Sagan. I mean, he concedes we don't have any common premises. So, yes, the conversation is almost what one might argue uh, moot or... <laughs> insane or pointlessly 
you know, I'm speaking Japanese, you're speaking Hawaiian, and it's just no point. I don't know, that's probably not a good example because Polynesian languages might be a little bit Japanese-y. Anyway, um, all right, so Fake Sagan uh, is just helping. Oh, thanks. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, rest assured, the, the, the good people like Fakey, so he has lots of good friends. Um, you know, not thugs and sluts. Um, but whatever. I don't need to rest assured. It's not really bothering me one way or the other. I'm just assuming. <laughs> yeah, that's all. I'm just adding 2 plus 2 and saying, yeah, it probably equals 4. Uh, shit loves company. Um, but not shit. Doesn't like hanging out with shit. Anyway, uh, I have uh, refrained from personal attacks. Well, that, yeah, it, was, it was just so uh, funny, you know. I'm a hypocrite and I'm running a death cult. Well, I don't know. It sounds like kind of a, an attack that's, you know, against my personal character. But uh, whatever. Fine. Who cares? Again, I don't care. All right. Um, obfuscation. I mean, just ins insane that he would even use this word. Um and uh, should deal in facts. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that would be really swell if you made a video where you just listed some facts about how life is really cool and makes perfectly good sense. Yeah, I I'd love to hear those. Um, where you're actually accomplishing something that you can expand to being something beyond notions in your head of accomplishment. I mean, an actual universal accomplishment rather than just some notional one. I'd be really interested in that. Um, <clears throat> quoting the... Uh, <laughs> oh, the Borg. Yes, resistance is, is futile. So, so he quotes a Borg quote. He, you know, he uses a, quote, quote, <laughs> a Borg quote from sci-fi that really wasn't even true, right? I mean, resistance wasn't futile. I mean, the Borg doesn't win, usually. Sometimes, anyway. Um, and, uh, because, yes, yeah, so, and, and who would, who, even if it was futile, why, why would I, I, why would I concede? I would force it to, I would not be a member. I mean, <laughs> you know, uh, the least I can do is not join the slave owners. I mean, maybe I can't stop them, but I wouldn't join them. Uh, so even that amount of resistance is not futile. And really, this argument is about uh, so something gets into the end game argument, and you know just it, it, it denies the most obvious element, which is any reduction in the game play. If I can reduce the pieces from a million to a hundred, I'm winning. I've you know huge victory, and um, so because he says I can't perfectly clean this piece of silverware therefore I shouldn't bother cleaning it at all well, that would be stupid right we all understand that a cleaner is better than dirtier so I mean I know that math is going to be tricky for him but clearly any improvement in the dirty condition would be great so any torture I can eliminate well excellent uh, you know very good bravo and I really don't want to get into a bunch of sci-fi-ish explanations of how these things can, that that's, this game can be won, in the sense that I could make the argument that the only thing that's evolved in the ocean with a brain, okay, what's the smartest thing native to the ocean? Octopus or shark? <laughs> these are the smart guys? Um, so, yeah, obviously evolution doesn't do what people think it does, which is all of us, you know, automatically gravitate somewhere. I mean, if we find the smartest cephalopod or the smartest crustacean, what's the smartest crustacean? Praying mantis? Um, bumblebee or something? I mean, you know, not all that smart. Um, so, yeah, the fish did okay when they went on land because, yeah, obviously they became mammals. And mammals are... So it's one tiny branch that you could say that most of the the hardly sentient are are on but I, I would argue that insects are sentient so um, and they you know may in some way be more extremely sentient than we are in the sense that the the bad is bad and the good is good and that's all it is is loudly good and loudly bad in terms of the reward and the punishments um, 
So it might even be a worse condition, especially metamorphosis. I mean, nature wouldn't care if the organism actually felt horrible as its body was ripped to pieces and rearranged. <laughs> you know, nature couldn't care less if it was tortured. It doesn't count torture as meaning anything. It just cares about survivability. Um, so the thing, the game could be so much more hideous than we're even aware. Um, but anyway, so so it's this end game argument that you can finally get all the the, the big animals you can take out gracefully. Um, the small, the little teeny shit you can't. So you're going to have to just annihilate it in one big, hopefully instantaneous event. And um, so they argue that there's somehow the science is incapable of doing this. And then they bring up something like extremophiles, which Obviously, extremophiles, there's no evidence that any extremophile ever evolved into a sentient organism. So, no huge threat there. They've been here for billions of years, and they haven't done much except stay as what they are. See, evolution doesn't necessarily, isn't obsessed with change. It's obsessed with making something that's efficient. So it makes a crocodile, and it basically says... I don't have to make double crocodile. Crocodile is good enough. Doesn't it? <laughs> doesn't really need improvement. It it's about as good a machine as you can get. It's really efficient. Uh, one meal a month. Um, really highly efficient. Um, so all this crap doesn't mean anything, you know, in the sense that that's not. It's a misunderstanding of evolution to say that it constantly wants to make sentient organisms. So even if I can't annihilate the DNA molecule. There's no evidence that neurons are going to happen again. So if I can wipe out neurons, I'm going to be way ahead of the game. And even if I left some behind, there's some evidence that they're not automatically going to turn into complex neural networks because they're not really necessary. I mean, most of the insects have stayed the same for hundreds of millions of years. No radical change in the design. Cockroach has been around that long, doing the same fucking thing. It didn't evolve into double cockroach or smart cockroach. Um, so anyway, but yeah, so getting into the mechanics of annihilating the world, and you know, talking about a thermonuclear war, you know, with bombs designed by a civilizations intending to use them for war, <laughs> is a little different than talking about if you're deliberately trying to cause damage so obviously you would make the bombs ex you know for damage uh, I mean for um, making a uh, uh, expediting the death of biological function you'd make them dirty and huge I mean huge and if you put them in the right place inside the earth's crust I'm pretty damn confident that um, you can cause a catastrophic extinction event, you know, by basically breaking off a piece of the earth big enough to roll around the rest of the earth and turn the whole thing back into a big molten ball of hot, sh hot shit that's hot as shit. And even the greenhouse argument can be made that you can by um, stuffing the atmosphere full of the right particles that you can create a hundred years of intensely high temperatures on earth and uh, vaporize all the DNA so anyway but you know, I don't know if it's worth making all those endgame arguments because my fundamental argument is is that any reduction is a good reduction in the amount of harm and any um, I'd say even if you were to preserve human existence um, humans in the future could be conscious of the suffering in the in nature and uh, do some uh, progressive and thoughtful eradication of silly um, lion cubs uh, you, uh, attrition kind of nonsense get rid of this prey predator nonsense and start cleaning up this mess in a um, graceful way and eventually get to the point where their technology is sufficient um, to do a complete job of it. So I don't think it's a I don't think it's a non-starter argument. First, because any progress in the direction is progress in the direction, and certainly by the time we're ready, 
by the time the individuals born today die their graceful death, a natural end, so to speak, have their life that they're entitled to, um, then it's, you know, whoever the last man left, you know, something like a me, <laughs> you know, will hit the last button, <laughs> you know, and finish the job. Um, and that's at least a hundred years from now. So, I, I don't think that, I think the technology is only going to make it more and more possible, not less and less possible. So, I don't think it's a very... I don't think it's a, an important argument to have at this stage just because any progress is progress. You save one kid from cancer, that's good. And save two, even better. Save 50, even better. I'm just saying that can't go wrong uh, with the right direction. It's, you don't have to get to the finish line to be winning. Anyway, um, all right, so the second one is... Uh, <laughs> Let's see, what is it? Self-imposed torture. Okay, yeah, so it's like I made the bad game I'm playing. So I guess I must be God. If it's self-imposed, I must have been God. And I made the game stupid and then sentenced myself to live in it. Hmm. So if the nest is smelly, it's because I have a bad nose, not because people have been shitting in it. <laughs> yeah, is that it? Um... No, it's the egg layers who are the problem, quite obviously. They're taking no responsibility to make, you know, they're not being proper birds. They're not making a proper nest and then laying eggs. Instead, they're saying, well, I wish we had done a better job, but fuck it. Let's just lay the egg on the branch and pretend it's a nest. The little fucker won't be able to figure out it's our fault. <laughs> he won't blame us. No, that's not possible. Um, all right, uh, so does your mama know? Um, so again, so it's going back into this personal crap, which, you know, I don't think has much, um, I, I don't, you know, he's obviously not going to uh, 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 answer my pointed personal questions. But anyway, it doesn't really, I really don't care one way or the other. I'll answer it, I've answered it before. Um, this is just, I mean, I understand why somebody hasn't watched enough videos to know that I've already answered this a few times. But yes, I confronted my mother when I was a teenager. Um, obviously, she, she, you know, when I was committing suicide a couple of times, I did it right to her face. I mean, I stuck a knife to my chest and said, "Shut up, bitch! I'm talking to yeah, I'm talking to you, bitch." So it's pretty, it's pretty obvious she knew I wasn't too pleased with her decision to, you know, put me in this shithole. Um, and so, you know, later. <laughs> when we had a more mature conversation about uh, her decision, you know, I asked her the pointed questions of why the hell did you have kids? And she, it was an expression of our love. <laughs> you know, and I laughed. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, you know just I, I knew something about sex and I knew something about romance. And I said, well, I don't know how exactly how babies do wonders for that because that's, that's the biggest lie ever told, right? Um, told by women, apparently. And they fool a bunch of men into it somehow. <clears throat> oh yeah, the baby will make everything great. They're really good. You use them as a dildo and stuff. And it's, ooh, 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 ooh. It's good stuff. Um, anyway, I mean, men get drunk and they do stupid things. I mean, that's all you can say, right? Um, well, apparently they do stuff that's stupid when they're not drunk. Which, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's, you know. It's what happens when you lay eggs on branches. The chicks don't come out very well. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, I confronted her. She gave the silly answer, and I said, well, you know, you've got to do better than that. And she admitted, well, I didn't really think about it. Everybody has kids. It's what you do. You have kids. And I said, well, you know, because they had the first kid, too. My sister had a cleft lip, you know, which wasn't a minor thing. You know, there's surgeries and all that kind of stuff. And and they still pursued it. They pushed on you know let's do this let's do some more of this reckless sloppy mess you know and then they had two girls and then there was i guess the idea was well we, we need a son blah 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 so they ended up with twins you know but they got the one son and you know then i tell the story that's kind of funny because i was kind of a runt you know and so i, I don't even think my father <laughs> thought i was legitimate you know what i mean it's like he's a runt i can't have a runt for a son um, but he apparently liked me enough to go fishing with me every weekend, so he did. He did have me tag along. I'm, but I just, 
I never really got the feeling that he was, you know, it's kind of like he was like, oh, no, I, that's not my kid. He was just following me. You know, I was, I was, you know, walking in and it's like, I don't know, he's like a lost puppy or something, you know. <laughs> you know, um, but that was, you know, maybe that was just my father. My father just wasn't, you know, touchy, feely, happy, gooey crap. He was more like, um, go to work and go fishing. <laughs> you go to work to get the money to go fishing or something. You know, he just didn't, he wasn't a, wasn't a complex fella. Um, but he was an engineer, which was ironic because he never taught me anything. And so the mother's side gets kind of funny because my mother was really the one who, even though she didn't know shit about anything, she constantly talk about anything. She could talk about everything, but yeah, she didn't know anything about anything. But she had, you know, she was great because she was curious about stuff and she would wonder, you know, how's the snail get in that shell or something like that. So, and so um, she encouraged thinking and pondering and wondering, and then she sort of encouraged it me because she saw that I was compulsively breaking everything and trying to figure out how things worked so she would buy me science books and then you know the real key thing was uh, one of those 501 electronic kits well it was probably 50 in one back then and you could make little radios and you could do a little shit with it and that really um, you know that turned me into somebody who thought about building things rather than just breaking them so now I was converting my knowledge of mechanics into something constructive rather than just constantly doing the how does it work <laughs> you know smash it with a hammer and see what its guts look like is that sort of you know so anyway that's enough of my little personal story but I'm just saying yes I asked them the question went through the whole thing and then they both admitted especially in their older age now later to all of the siblings that yes if they had it to do over again shit they wouldn't have done it so if they knew that their daughter was going to die horribly of cancer, <laughs> that their son would be a antisocial, uh, you know, can't really stand this stupid putrid game, um, yeah, they wouldn't have done it because yeah, it didn't work out quite right. Not that it happened. Not that they had a horrible life because they did very well. They didn't have debilitating illnesses or any kind of horror, but they saw enough of it around them. Okay, they watched people die horribly. They watched Alzheimer's. They watched their daughter die. They watched me, um, hermit, and um, they get it. This game is a little bit that uh, I was uh, <laughs> I was underqualified, and they admitted it. And they said, yeah, they probably would have been better off not having kids and taking trips to Europe and Egypt and doing all that kind of stuff because they both love traveling. So they probably should have done that instead of the kid project. So I got them to admit it. So, uh, yeah, your little game didn't work at all, did it? Your, your, oh, I'm going to try to get you with some more personal crap. Boing, burm, b b boomerang. <laughs> yeah, the boomerang just whacked you in the back of the head, didn't it, fella? Because, yeah, they conceded it all. They conceded they were ignorant and they made a stupid decision. All right. So, I win. On that one, anyway. <laughs> you know, not that they'll come up with some other crap to, you know, forget that I just, you know... Like I said, you never you never win because it's just two more questions, personal, two more personal questions, two more irrelevant questions. All right, so I think that's enough, right? So again, I just um, I like the idea of forcing people to play the game, play the feed the lion cub to the snake game. You know, I'd like to be able to make that on the internet and just see if people can even do it in a virtual way. If they could even do it with a, with a synthetic, you know, just a stuffed little lion cub that has a little voice box in it going, Don't kill me, don't kill me, don't make me get killed by the snake, please. And let's see if they could do it. Drop it in. Is otherwise, um, all your talk about it's worth it is just words. Words in the face of something else's to torture. It's just bold talk from somebody who's not on the gurney. 
And that's just bullshit. Somebody not getting fed to the snake. Yeah. So. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, there. Uh, I almost forgot the, <laughs> the most important part. Fuck you! <sighs> okay. Anyway, so I think that's enough. So, till uh, the next, um, whatever this is, bumper car fun. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he made a Brett Keane video that was kind of funny. I mean, I'll just, you know, I don't want to make a separate video, but Brett Keane's never worth it. It's not even worth me saying the words Brett Keane. It's just, what are we wasting time doing that for? Um, but he was like, Brett Keane is intelligent or something, because Brett Keane came up with this great argument, uh, you know, about um, the fact that, three scientists are found to, to be discussing what if it's a matrix when this is the most common idiot question that's asked scientists is some stupid question like that and they'll talk about they'll indulge the question and say yeah well I can't prove it's not but there's no real evidence it is and there are there is some evidence indicating that if it is a matrix it was designed by somebody who's really shitty at programming um, but regardless, um, that somehow this is a metaphor for the scientists coming back to religion. And I'd argue that, of course, they're coming back to religion. They never left religion in a sense. They just left the most idiotic part of it. But they still are looking at the sky going glittery, glittery. That They're still, oh, it's so beautiful when the little lion cubs are fed to the fucking snakes. <laughs> you know, it's the greatest show on earth. No, it's this is the most horrible show in the universe. This isn't a good show, you stupid cunt. So yeah, the fact that Dawkins is clueless, well, that's already known when, you know, he was interrogated on why he's not a vegetarian. <laughs> he didn't have a very good answer. Um, and I'm sure Degrassi, Tyson, and uh, whatever it is, um, bow tie man, um, are also just scientists because it's fun. You know, they don't take it all that seriously. Being a scientist is fun. Everybody likes you and thinks you're smart and intelligent. And, no, oh, it's just so fun. I mean, I don't think they're taking it very seriously. Uh, they all smiles on their face all the time. Like, oh, this is... Oh, I love talking about how cruel nature is. Yeah, they're kind of nihilist motherfucking cunts. So, you know, I, I wouldn't... I wouldn't say that science has, um... Um performed very honestly. It's like Carl Sagan. Oh, blue ball in space. Well, color is sort of irrelevant, but yeah, we like the color blue. I mean, if it was a puke green ball in space, ooh, yeah, that wouldn't be quite as cool, would it? I mean, if Earth was puke green, ooh, or yellowy, pukey green, ooh. But it just conveniently turns out that it's all kind of swirly nice colors. Yeah. It's like having a cat that sometimes the cats are born and just an unfortunate blotches in all the wrong places, you know. His face looks like an anus or something and you're just like, oh, that's unfortunate. So we're just lucky that the earth is a pretty cat. And uh, they make that into a fact. That's important. Oh, it's pretty, 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 pretty. It's not science. It's bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I mean, I like Carl Sagan, but he was just so full of la 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 la, and he didn't really pay much attention to the fucking you know wasp laying its eggs inside the spider's spine, and vice versa, of course. All right, enough. Till next time and such. I'm out of here. Well, I'm moving from camera, synthetic me, and I'll go back to being real me. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Anyway, until next time.